Hi, I'm Chief Nestor Martinez. I'm stationed at Joint Regional Marianas, and today I'm here with my wife, Kathy Martinez, and we're gonna be making Mexican tamales. 100 grams of wet flour, red beans, onion, oil, sugar, and celery. This is my best cooking show. So, Kathy, uh, let's go over the ingredients. Okay. Uh, we're going to be using four cups of corn flour, one and a half pounds of uh, chopped roast beef, one cup of vegetable oil, 20 guajillo peppers, one onion, two garlic cloves, four tablespoons of salt, and about 20 uh, corn husk. And this will make about 15 to 20 tamales. First, I, I put my, my beef to cook because it takes about two hours to be ready. I usually put it to medium. You need about one gallon of water. I'm gonna put half of my onion and two tablespoons of salt. What one gallon of water for the for the meat? Oh, because you need the broth to make the the masa for the tamales. How about the chilies? I cook the chilies for about an hour or two. They need to be soft because uh, you're gonna make the sauce that is gonna make uh, the beef great. Now the, uh, we have the meat and the stuff, uh, what's next? Well, in the meantime, uh, we can start putting our, our uh, corn husk to suck in water, and we're gonna suck in, in uh, hot water for about 10 minutes. How hot is the water? Uh, just as hot as you can get it on the top. One tip that I know is like, the hotter the water is, the fastest they, they'll get soft. See, it's ready, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Wow, the chili changed color. Yes, it actually changes color. Turns a, uh, just a little bit lighter. You can see that it's really, really soft now. You can feel the smell and even the sauce is like, it matches the smell with the, with the flavor of the sauces. Okay, we're gonna shred the beef first. And then while you shred the beef, I'll make the sauce. And as you can see, the beef is falling apart by itself after two hours of cooking. It doesn't have to be like very fine, but just shred it apart. Would this be okay? Or you want it more shredded? A little it? more, please. Yes, ma'am. Now the peppers, uh, we have to devein them. Have to take all the seeds out. Because if you leave the seeds, uh, it might be really spicy. Basically what we're using is most of the pulp of the peppers. Now that I devein the, the peppers, I'm gonna be putting some of the water that I used to boil them. And I'm gonna be adding one quarter of the onion and the two garlic cloves. Any salt? Yes, I'm gonna use just one tablespoon right now and I'm gonna blend it. Okay, now that the uh, salsa is ready, we're gonna put it on, on the pot with the, with the beef. And we need to use a strainer because uh, on the salsa there's still a lot of, a lot of uh, skin of the peppers. The texture is, is not so pleasant. Uh, I see. All the seeds will make the tamas spicy. It doesn't feel good when, when you leave the, the skin of the peppers. So now we wait for about maybe 10 minutes just to let the beef uh, absorb the flavor of the peppers. I'm curious about the masa. I see that the broth is still hot from a... Uh... Yes, I like using the broth when it's still really hot. So that's why I have to use gloves. Uh, what, what's the make... reason for it? Because it kind of cooks the, the masa a little bit and that will help for you when you're making your tamales. How much of the water are you gonna use for this? I think almost all of it. Because uh, corn flour, it absorbs a lot of water. So you need, I would say, maybe six cups. If you feel like you need more, then you add more. So now I'm gonna add the oil. One tablespoon, I think we can add one more tablespoon of salt. Oh, I see what you're saying. I thought that was a lot of water, but now the mass has to have absorbed muscle. You need more. Then you're gonna be using your hands too. But you have to feel it, you have to feel how, how uh, soft the masa is getting. The hotter the water is, or the, uh, the broth, uh, the softer will be your tamales. I'm gonna be putting the beef in another container so that it's not too hot. You can already feel the smell. I can tell that I'm making tamales. You're right, it smells like tamales. <laughs> Let's check if you did a good job. <laughs> so see, uh, since I'm using gloves, it's 
actually easier to tell if your mask is ready. You can see it's soft and it doesn't get stuck in your gloves. It has to be a little bit softer than dough. Okay, now that we have everything ready, our beef is ready, our masa and the husk. What you do now, you're gonna get your husk and you put maybe two spoons of masa. You put your beef and then you wrap it. Now that the tamales are ready, um, what's the next step? The next step is to um, to put them to steam. What you do is you fill up uh, the water. To the cover? Yes. This is how we do it. We cover the, the bottom with the husk too. And then we put our tamales like this. We don't, we don't put them like uh, laying down because sometimes if the masa is too runny. It will be messy. It will be messy. We, we have to put another layer of husk to keep the steam in there. So now they're ready to start cooking and we're gonna put it to medium for about, I'll say an hour. Okay, now I'm gonna put my tomatoes to cook for my other salsa for when our uh, tamales are ready. So all you need is two tomatoes, half of a teaspoon of oregano and maybe half of a quarter of an onion and a little bit of salt, just like a pinch. Okay, let's check if the tamales are ready. Thank you. This works. There, uh, they're ready. Yummy. Who's ready to eat? Okay, so I'm just gonna add some of the toppings. This is how I like to eat the tamales. So what I do is just put some cream on the top it, and then some cabbage, and then tomato salsa in there. That's your tamal ready to eat. Some other people like it with just the sour cream and salt or, or just by itself. Well, now the tamales are ready, there's just one thing left to do. Let's dig in. Dig in. Mm. Pretty good job. The taste of the flour, the corn flour, um, you know, tortilla is uh, the base of our diet. So the tamal, the meat, the flavor of the chili all comes together. All together, and it's, it's pretty good. Amazing. And the corn cask, it actually gives a flavor to the tamal. Thank you so much for watching us today. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make Mexican tamales. And I really hope you'll join us for the next episode of Bass Cooking. See you then.